To have this program included in your learning record, you must watch it to the end. away from the nearest towns and uh, when you're driving didn't matter in which direction or going to town and another car approached you stopped and you had a yarn time didn't matter but now that seems to be so rare if you're on the road today you're both traveling so blooming fast that uh, nobody has any time to stop and uh, so that's one part where life has changed. And, uh, and I've got lovely neighbours both sides. If I was uh, capable of walking, I'd walk down and say good day to them through the, through the week, but I can't do that anymore. And I don't see them much at all. A lot of people have not got the time anymore to become involved. Hello, I'm Karen Martin. Welcome to this special forum on the Community Visitors Scheme, or CVS produced in conjunction with the Department of Social Services. You've just heard from 87-year-old Ernie, a retired ambulance officer with a passion for his local area and a career spanning more than 40 years in emergency services. Ernie loves a good yarn, but his situation has made it difficult for him to connect with the community he has served for so many years. That was until Ernie was referred by his home care package provider to the Community Visitors Scheme, a free service available for eligible older people who are at risk of social isolation. We'll hear more about Ernie's story in a moment, but to tell us more about the Community Visitors Scheme, I'm joined in the studio today by two CVS Network members. They are Isis Torfik, CVS Manager at Multiple Sclerosis and Victorian Network member, and Valerie Chu, CVS Coordinator with the Sydney Local Health District and Cord Network member. Welcome Valerie and Isis to the program. Hi Karen. Hi, Hi everyone. Karen. So Isis, for those who may not have heard about the Community Visitors Scheme, can you give us an overview of what it is and who it is for? The Community Visitors Scheme was developed by the Australian Government back in the early 1990s and is managed by the Department of Social Services. It was developed to meet the needs of recipients in aged care homes who were at risk of social isolation and loneliness. In 2013, it was extended to people receiving home care packages and also group visits in aged care homes. It is a free service and it is um, develop, it is delivered by auspices. Great, but it's not for people receiving hack services. No, that's right. People receiving hack services already have social programs built into their packages. Thank you for that clarification. And Valerie, of course, your role caters specifically for people from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds who are living in residential aged care. So why is it important that they have access to a program like the CVS? Yes, this is very important because this is one group there of particular at risk of isolation. Imagine moving into an aged care home. For many older people, it's already a life or very traumatic experience. Now, especially for people from a cold background, they may not be able even to communicate the very basic needs to the facility staff, let alone making friends around. So some of them may not even be able to join in the activities organized by the staff. So by bringing in a volunteer visitor, they are actually can reduce the risk of isolation and also bring in the outside world to them and reconnect their culture. It sounds like it's a wonderful service and of course we know that the CVS takes a collaborative approach between the network member, the provider, volunteers and organisations such as you mentioned, auspices, ESAs. What is an auspice and what is the relationship between auspices, the aged care provider and the volunteers? So auspices are organisations such as Red Cross, such as Multiple Sclerosis or COASIT that are funded by the Australian Government to deliver the Community Visitor Scheme. So we recruit, support, train and engage the volunteers to be matched to recipients um, that are referred by aged care providers that require friendship and companionship. So we work collaboratively together to provide that added value to the recipient's life. That sounds like a wonderful service, but Valerie, who can refer an older person to the CVS? Oh, basically anybody. 
anybody who identifies someone who is eligible and those who can benefit from having some friendship and companionship can make the referral. The, for example, people who work in residential aged care facilities or home care workers or even aged care providers, family members, friends, relatives or even the person himself or herself. So there's a network member in each state and territory who can connect you with the CVS auspice in your local area. Isis, how can people refer someone to the program? It's really easy, as you mentioned. Um, it is best that people contact the state or territory network member, such as Valerie or myself, um, and they can go through the My Age Care website or call the 1800 number. The number for My Age Care is 1800 200 422. Or you can visit My Age Care website at www.myagecare.gov.au. So let's hear now from Jane Wells, who works for the CVS Auspice Red Cross, about receiving Ernie's referral and matching him with the trained volunteer, Lynn. Hi, my name's Jane Wells. I am the uh, Community Visitors Scheme Coordinator in Tweed Heads, and I was responsible for matching Ernie and Lynn. So Ernie was referred to me by Blue Care, who's a, a home care package provider in this area. Um, Gail from Blue Care sent me through um, a number of referrals and one of them was Ernie. The reason why she referred him was because he was particularly lonely after his wife had passed away and just coming to terms with a new situation that he was in at home alone. When I first met Lynn, I, um, I thought one of the reasons why she came to volunteering was to say that she wanted to be part of her new community. she just moved here. And the fact that Ernie had been such a long-term local and then Lynn was new to this area, I thought they would be a really good match because they had something to share with each other. When I first met Ernie, he'd just come out of hospital. He'd been in for quite some time with pneumonia, but while he was in there, he was diagnosed with leukaemia. So he was quite down and um, he didn't get many home visitors at all. He was sad. Um, he sent cards on the internet and didn't get any cards back. And he rings people, but people don't ring him back. And um, yeah, that was the sort of thing he was telling me when I first met him. He's got family, but they're all very busy. And he knows a lot of people here from the ambulance, but nobody hardly ever visits him. And if they do, they just pop in and out and nobody actually sits down and listens to him. When I first met Lynn, well, it was Jane that, that brought her here. And um, we t just spoke on all general, general things and um, we just clicked. Lynn comes to visit every, uh, every Thursday. Well, we're mainly talking about general, general subjects, but mostly I, I have a lot of old photos to show and we quite often go over and over some of those. Ernie has opened up in the last few months. When I first met him, we just talked generally about our families, but he has opened up. So, you know, I, I think that as much as anything has been good that I've, he's had somebody to open up to. So was that one of the ambulances that you did the maintenance yes. on? Yes, yeah, that was one of the one I think it's important for someone like Ernie to have um, a volunteer with this Community Visitor Scheme program as he does have um, paid workers coming in to do work for him but they are restricted by time and by the things that they need to do. Um, whereas Lynn, for example, has plenty of time as a volunteer. She's, uh, she's able to sit down and listen to Ernie to get to know him on a deeper level than uh, the staff that are coming in. And whilst they have great relationships and great friendships and Ernie respects the, you know, the work that they do, it is a different relationship that he has with Lynn um, because Lynn is there specifically for him as a person. So Isis and Valerie, that's a very interesting comment that Jane made about how different Ernie's relationship with his volunteer might be to the paid staff. Any thoughts about that? Absolutely, I agree with Jane. The staff are there to provide services. They're there to provide showering or um, cleaning or um, shopping. But our volunteers, we place them as visitors and match them to recipients for time. They sit and have a chat. They sit and reminisce. They might watch a... T 
TV show together or play a board game or wander in the garden. It's all about contributing that time and adding friendship and value to the recipient's life. And Valerie, having a volunteer that speaks a person's language and understands their culture must be a lifeline for some of your clients. Yes, indeed. The volunteer providing very important emotional support to the residents. I mean, very often, facility staff are great in looking after them, but they don't have the time to spend one-on-one -on -one together, which the, I mean, which the residents really need. Now, as a matter of fact, you know, all older people, particularly those from a cold background, would also like to have friends coming to see them from time to time, chatting to them, and doing things they enjoy doing together. Now, just lately, I received a referral from a facility staff requesting for a Czech speaking volunteer to visit Maria, who is very isolated in the facility. Maria tried to make friends with other people in the, in, in the facility, but because of her English, other people find it very difficult to understand her, so Maria became extremely isolated. And lucky for Maria, we managed to find her a Czech speaking volunteer within a month. And when they first met, Maria was so, so happy. She held the volunteer's hand so tightly, she wouldn't let her go. Aww. And they keep chatting and chatting for over 90 minutes until the lunch was served. Maria later told the volunteer that it's a miracle came true because she had prayed to God that the God would bring her a volunteer who can speak her language. Aww. That is an amazing story. Well, Jane also mentioned receiving Ernie's referral from a provider. Isis, what are the steps that you take when you receive a referral from a pro for the program? Well, basically, the first thing we do is we take a look at that referral and we look at the interests and the background of the recipient. And we then recruit based on those and we use the person-centred philosophy. It's very important to us. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we, hopefully that way, ensure that that match, that friendship match, it will be successful and sustainable. That's incredibly important for us. Yeah, just as we heard from, from you, Valerie, it sounds like a, the most rewarding experience for them all. So we have a caller on the line right now. It's Ebony, who is a package care provider from community-based support in Moona, Tasmania. Hello, Ebony, and welcome to the program. Hi, Karen. So, Ebony, have you got an experience or story you'd like to share with us about the CVS? Yeah, we've, we've got quite a few clients now with volunteers and they're all going so well. One client in particular comes to mind because she's an older lady and she has no family, very few social visits. So she's pretty lonely mm. and often um, wanted the paid staff to stay and chat, which meant they didn't have as much time to carry out their other tasks that they needed to do. Yes. So we referred her to the CBS and um, they've matched her with um, a really suitable volunteer and they get along so well. Um, it's been able to provide someone who can just be there as a friend instead of having a paid worker go. So um, she's been a lot happier mm -hmm. and the staff have been able to get their work done, which has been great. Um, and in fact, it's really helpful having volunteers available, especially just for that friendship and social visit because now our home care packages can be more flexible and Sometimes it's a bit tricky fitting everything into their package so we can provide those essential services like showering and shopping, yes. um, but they can still get the social visits. Um, and it's also enabled staff to maintain professional boundaries and um, just getting everything done. Thank you for that. So Valerie, have you got something to add to that? Oh yes, for sure. The volunteer is actually an excellent way to supplement and enhance the existing care provided by the service providers. Yes, of course. And, and ACES. Well, I think it's wonderful because this way the home care providers are able to continue the services they're providing. Um, the community visitor scheme is free, mm -hmm. so it's a win-win situation for the home care providers, the auspices and the recipients and their family. That's fantastic. And Ebony, thank you so much. It was great to hear your comments. Thanks for joining us in today's program. No worries. Thanks, Karen. Bye now. So, Issa, is it right that the CVS helps aged care providers meet their obligations under the Aged Care Act? Yeah, absolutely correct. We, it does help them to meet the legislation requirements and it also adds and enhances the life of recipients through the social interaction. Well, we have another caller on the line right now. It's Melissa Scott, a registered nurse from McLean Care in New South Wales. Hi, Melissa. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Karen. And you have a question for us today? I do. I was just wondering... What the procedure might be should the older person on the program die mm -hmm. or if 
they were to re report a problem with their volunteer? That's a fantastic question. Issa's probably just out of that. Well, the best thing for the aged care provider to do is to either contact the CVS coordinator or the volunteer directly when a recipient passes away, depending on the time of day. If it's on the weekend or out of hours, it is best to go directly to the volunteer. This is to ensure that the volunteer doesn't turn up to visit their friend and be shocked by the fact that their friend has passed away. It's really important. Um, and also there are other times that you may need to contact the, the, the coordinator or the volunteer in times when the recipient is so unwell that they're unable to receive a visit or if the facility is in lockdown mode. I guess the key thing here to remember is that communication mm -hmm. um, is vital. It's important to constantly communicate with the auspice or the volunteer. If there are cases where the volunteer, um, there are problems with the volunteer, best thing to do is to contact the CVS coordinator. I'm very confident that any issues will be able to be dealt with and sorted through by just communicating any issues as soon as they happen. That sounds like sound advice. And Valerie, would you agree with that from your experience? Oh, absolutely. I cannot agree with them more. Now, in many cases, as Yes has mentioned, I mean, we do have cases like volunteer visit and the person's not there. Now, as a matter of fact, the volunteer are walking the last journey with their friend. Yes. Now, very often they have established a very special bond with, with each other. And if anything happened, they would like to say the final goodbye to their friends. So it's very important to let the volunteer know if there's a change of circumstances or health status of the friend. So that, I mean, they can prepare themselves or to, to finally to farewell their friend. Now, if they have any concern about the condition of the resident, they should contact the CVS coordinator directly or seek their assistance from us. As part of our service and our uh, management of volunteers, we also provide training on grief mm -hmm. and loss. Mm -hmm. In the induction training, we provide our volunteers, provide ongoing support and other support services in the case that a volunteer requires that um, if their recipient passes away. Oh, that, that's fantastic support. Well, Melissa, I hope we've been able to answer your question today. You certainly have. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Bye now. OK, bye. So, Isis, I guess there's a fair degree of trust that you develop with providers and the volunteers, the older people and their families. And in particular, once they understand how you follow the necessary procedures and, of course, the care you take to find the right people. Absolutely. Um, the role of the auspice is to deliver the Community Visitor Scheme. Our goal is to provide an exceptional service, mm -hmm. a holistic approach, and where we consider each and every recipient um, by their personal needs and background. So we ensure that we follow all legislation, national standards, and ensure all our processes are at a very high level. Our screening, our mm -hmm. onboarding of volunteers, our ongoing support, we work in partnership with the aged care providers. Our goal is to ensure that we can provide this service to as many older people living in aged care homes or receiving a home care package as we possibly can. It does just sound the most amazing service. I wish I had it for my 94-year-old dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, Valerie, tell us, what about the effort that you put into finding suitable volunteers? Oh, because we're matching coal volunteers to coal residents, and we take particularly important measures are to make sure the match is right. Now, just like Isis mentioned about person-centred care, now, before we match somebody else, we always go to the facility to meet with the resident and the staff to try to find out more about the resident, to understand the background, for example, the cultural practice or the religious background or the gender of the resident they prefer or things they like to do. Now, in, also in finding the suitable volunteer, we also screen them to find out their background and to find out what and why they would like to volunteer. So once we find all the things they can match together and then we, and then we match um, to make sure everything works together. Of course, I mean, at the end we support the volunteer and also we support the client and volunteer relationship. Now this takes a lot of pressure from the nursing homes yes. or the facilities so that they can do other things which is of more urgent priorities. Yes, I guess you're giving them a lot of confidence through this program that you are actually trying very hard to make that happen. So Isis, um, I'm sure too you've seen lots of examples where the volunteers really made a difference to somebody's quality of life and their quality of care. Is there anything in particular you want to share with us? I have so many stories that um, 
and the beauty of this program, it is very much a grassroots program. But one story that comes to mind is about one of our volunteers, Mary Ann, who was matched with a recipient, Doris, um, and their friendship was um, really lovely and developed throughout the years that they were together. Now Doris really enjoyed her garden when she was living at home and missed it greatly when she was in the aged care home, particularly as she became bedridden. So Mary Ann, as an artist, came to us and asked if we could purchase paint for her and we did that. Mm -hmm. And throughout her visits she would paint, um, she painted a beautiful garden mural on the window oh, of Doris's room so she could actually enjoy the garden. Mm -hmm. Um, and feel that the garden was still part of her life. It added such value to Doris's mm. life and Mary Ann, and it made us feel pretty good too. Of course, how beneficial for everybody, as you say. Valerie, can you talk more about the role of volunteers and what kind of assistance they provide, and in particular, what tasks are off limits to them? The role of the volunteer is simply to be a friend, to be there together with them, spend time doing things together, spend time chatting to each other. Now, it's great support to each other, now there are a few things the volunteer are not supposed to do. Number one, the volunteer are not supposed to monitor the standard of care yes. of the aged care facility. Number two, the volunteer are not interfering the day-to-day -day operation of the aged care service. Number three, the volunteer are not performing any personal or nursing care. And number four, they are not replacing the role of any activity, therapy, or care staff. Now, by the way, there are tasks the volunteer can also do. The volunteer can actually help the older person to do some daily tasks, for example, mailing letters, but only when they are comfortable to do so and only when the task is appropriate. Sure, and what if a volunteer visitor becomes concerned about a person's condition? Can they seek advice from their CV, from their CVS hospice coordinator? Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, all volunteers are encouraged to communicate with the CVS coordinators from time to time, especially if there are any issue of concern or, or if they are really concerned about the condition of the resident, I mean, do approach the CVS coordinators. Yeah. That is good advice. And Lisa, the CVS is available to anyone who meets the eligibility criteria. Now, we know Valerie's role is to cater for the special needs of clients from called backgrounds specifically, but the CVS has a much broader reach, doesn't it, including to other special needs groups. Absolutely. It is very important that we actually provide the services to people in the special needs group according to the Aged Care Act, mm -hmm. including groups such as um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, um, people that are uh, live in rural or regional areas, or people who are in financial hardship. Great. And I guess also the LGBTI communities and other, th as you said, other, those groups that Absolutely. are being um, identified under the Aged Care Act. So next online we have someone who works very closely with people in rural and remote areas. It's Marion Mitchell from Esperance Home Care in WA. Hello Marion and welcome to the program. Hello Karen, it's a pleasure to be with you. So Marion, in your role as CVS coordinator for rural and remote areas, you must um, be a lifeline to some of the clients there. Have you got some stories you can share with us? I have. I've certainly got one. It's the one on visits, one on one visits in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. I had a young man who with severe disabilities approach me and he wanted to do some volunteer work and of course that posed a few problems. Mm. But then at a similar time I had a referral come through to me from the aged care facility uh, requesting some support and friendship with a gentleman that they'd recently taken in and he was really struggling with settling in. He'd recently lost his partner and he'd also found that he was in a wheelchair. Yeah. So I felt perhaps that the two of them might match up quite well. So I took the young man along and introduced him to the older man. And when that older man saw this young man come in in a wheelchair, it just broke down all those barriers. He, it just teetered off immediately because it has helped him realise how lucky he was with himself. Yes. So, he sounds That's like really an amazing young man. And of yes. course, um, you have volunteers that, that um, have group visits there for the residents in the nursing home. Yes, I do, yes. And one of the great things with the group visits down here is that the aged care facility themselves are very supportive of our, our group um, visits and they help uh, get our residents to the the... Um, the where we're going to have the little meeting yes. and enable them to get... 
uh, there on the right, right day and the right time. <laughs> That's a great help. So, yeah. <laughs> So I do have a little group I'd like to share, which is called our Pooch Group. Yes. And they visit, with, and there's two visitors with their two lovely dogs. And they come along and they visit with three ladies who are living with dementia. And, of course, with these people with dementia, they do find it difficult to communicate effectively. But with the dogs, they just come to life and they love petting them and spending time and spoiling them and slipping them biscuits with their afternoon tea. I can imagine. Of the dogs <laughs> love that as well. Yes. And um, it just encourages them and brings them to life and it's very rewarding to see. I do have one lady that um, is quite reluctant actually to leave her room, but when she's told that the dogs have come to visit, she's up and out of there at, 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 in no time at all. <laughs> Yes, I guess that, yes, as you say, they enjoy it so much. They feel so, 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 such a sense of belonging to that group and it's so important for them. And Marion, of course, your service is particularly important to people, you know, to connect those people who are isolated in their own homes around Esperance. Yes, yes, for sure. We do, as part of our services, provide home care packages. Mm -hmm. But as you said at the beginning, we are rural and remote and that does pose problems. And we um, we don't have an effective bus service for our people in town. And so when a person loses their licence and they can't walk very far, they're very socially isolated. Yes. And that can then lead, of course, as we know, to loneliness and depression. Mm. And so it's lovely to be able to arrange a visitor to go into that home and support that person and just be a friend and help link that community back into the, her, that that client's home and, and bridge the gap a little bit. Well, it sounds like you're definitely doing that and doing a great job out there. Marion, thank you so much for telling us that story today and joining with us on the program. Bye for now. Bye-bye, Karen. What a lovely story. Mm. Isis, we're talking about a surface for people who are isolated and therefore also particularly vulnerable. Can you talk us through the police checks arrangements that the CVS volunteers have to go through? Absolutely. So as the to, um, as the auspice for the Community Visitor Scheme, all of us um, undertake police check for volunteers and actually, um, actually a whole suite of screening for our volunteers. We do referee checks, we do the police checks and we also conduct, ask the volunteer, sorry, who um, has lived overseas past the age of 16 for over 12 months to complete a stat deck. And that's part of the screening to ensure that we provide the best possible screening for volunteers mm -hmm. who are going to work with a vulnerable age group. Mm -hmm. We also provide training for mm -hmm. our volunteers and it includes grief and loss as we mentioned earlier. It provides occupational health and safety, um, describes what we expect in, as part of that role, um, the rights and responsibilities of volunteers, um, information about the aged care sector, confidentiality and privacy which is really important also. Um, and all sorts of other areas that we feel is important, like, such as culturally and linguistically diverse. And also not placing judgment on people's lifestyles or if, they've, you know, from, if they come from a particular background or they're part of the LGBTI community, for example. And of course, does that include insurance? All our volunteers are insured while they're conducting the work, um, volunteering in the Community Visitor Scheme, yes. So if you're watching this as an aged care provider, an eligible care recipient, member of staff, relative, friend or even if you just know a person who meets the eligibility criteria and could benefit from the CVS program, get in touch with your local CVS network member such as these ladies here. They can arrange regular visits from a trained volunteer visitor and give you more information on how you too can volunteer for the program if you'd like to be a visitor yourself. Again, those contact details are available on the Department of Social Services website or you can contact My Aged Care on 1800 200 422 or visit My Aged Care website at www.myagecare.gov.au. Valerie and Isis, thank you for joining us for today's program. Valerie, what message do you want people to take away from today's program? Um, what I would like to say is this tremendous privilege to be able to walk the last journey with an older person, to bring some positive change in their life, and also to bring smile on their face is tremendously satisfying. Now the CVS program is a life-changing program for so many older people, and also it's great for the aged care providers, so get involved. <laughs> That's a great message, thank you. And Isis? 
I agree with Valerie. It's a win-win situation. This program is auspiced by organisations. Um, it is provided free of charge. It is provided by the Australian Government. It is an opportunity to make such a difference for our recipients as they age and adds incredible value. Definitely get involved and send those referrals through to us. And it also sounds easy. So, Isis and Valerie, again, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for those messages and a big thank you too to all for watching today's program and to our callers. And remember to switch on to ACC for more inspiring and informative discussions coming up. Until then, from me, Karen Martin and all of us here at ACC, stay connected and call your local CBS to help others do the same. To send us off, here are some final words from the team at Tweed Heads. Everyone has a story and their life is like a treasure box that needs to be opened. And I think the Community Visitor Scheme is a way for a volunteer to become part of someone's life, open the treasure box, hear all about it and acknowledge the valuable life that someone has led. I enjoy those visits and uh, met people that I have never met before uh, because at my age, well, most of my uh, friends and uh, relatives have died and so I've, I have to form a new uh, association with, uh, with new people and uh, I'm very willing to do that and, and I'm enjoying it very much. If you've got anybody that would love somebody to come in and visit them, I recommend that you do it because it's for both of us. The volunteer gets a lot out of it too. It changes both people's lives and um, you can make a new friend and um, everybody wants a friend.